that would be a potential problem. Everybody's as old as they've ever been. Whoa. John actually is an artist too, and sometimes he'll do like oh, original. Dubstep knob. Okay, potential problems broadcast. How are you guys? You're listening to the potential problems and had already masturbated like six times that day. So, <laughs> so there was no way. Potential problems podcast. Good puss. <laughs> <laughs> Good puss. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to check in with Mike Wilson again. When I was putting this intro together, I was like, it's it's good puss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that, that insane motherfucker. Yeah. I miss that guy. We got we to gotta fucking talk to him before some hurricane comes through Florida and fucks it all up. It's Takes way. out the infrastructure. Uh, let's do it. Or maybe Ten. we organize a trip out there. A trip? Let's go to Florida. Let's do it. Visit that puss. <laughs> I think we should. I think yeah. we should. Potential Problems Podcast. My name is Alan Clark. I'm John Quayar. Oh. How's it going? We have our timing We're in back. studio. The conversational timing without lag through the internet. Yeah, we're, we're in studio. Oh, my God. Masks. Ks, 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 ks. Deal masks off. Oh. What? Masks. Masturbating. Masturbating. Masks. Masturbating. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we're glad to be back in studio now. This week's guest. Uh, oh, I guess we'll get to that later. Yeah, we're banter, talking banter, to him banter, later. banter, yeah. banter, banter. We're talking to him before later, later tomorrow, before now. Yeah. <laughs> to- <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Today's Sunday. The weather is. I don't know. We're releasing episodes on Sunday now. That's part of the new. Are thing. we? Yeah. Well, because I edit them. Uh, well, Sunday I mean, at what time? Should I? I schedule it for 8.30 in the morning. Ah, oh, that's I good. I schedule the posts to drop at 8.30. I can change drop. it to Monday. No, I think Sunday's good because people are like off. They're like, hey, what am I doing? Yeah. Fuck church. Yeah. Did you know, according to recent surveys, uh, 60% of people do not have a church they go to nor a denomination they claim, they claim in America. But I but I've heard rhetoric that this is a Christian nation. Uh, might be. No, I don't. I don't know if that number is accurate. Well, I'm Christian. You're Christian, right? No, I'm Alan. No, you're Christian. But Alan, your religion is Christian. Christianity. Yeah, but I went to Catholic churches too. Okay. But that was more of a with my uh, with my cousins. Did you ever get baptized? I was I was baptized. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I got the tip cut. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I already knew that. <laughs> uh, the dog's upset well, that yeah, you revealed rooms. your uh, your religion. There. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway. don't worry, I'm emotionally fine from it, despite all the fucking anti-circumcision rhetoric that gets thrown around on the internet. Dude, I've been seeing an uptick in that shit, man. Where yeah. people are like, what? So it's like years you creep? Well, what it's the the reason is there's no reason for it, right? That's what they say. They, people say it's purely a, 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 for looks. Yeah. But, I mean, they also say it's for cleanliness, and then people counter back with, well, you don't know how to wash your dick. And it's like, yeah, are you, have you met a guy? <laughs> the only time they're washing their dick is when they're making it dirty. Have you ever washed a guy's dick? It's not that easy to do. They just come all spit over the place. It? You ever spit shine? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm no Marlon Brando. <clears throat> I was showing someone. I sent that picture to Josh Fournier, and I, I thought maybe he didn't appreciate it as much as I do. Well, that's okay. <laughs> it's Marlon Brando with a big dick in his mouth. It's a fucking great picture. It's yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't, I would probably get that framed and put on my wall. Oh, probably. yeah. Tribute it, right? Yeah, yeah, right next to the Godfather <laughs> poster. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> One of his lesser known roles why accompanying you, the great role. Why do you think his jaws were like that? Because he was holding loads in there. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's really great. I've got to save these for later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
I feel like we need to tone it down. I feel I've, I'm having a beer for the first time in a yeah, long man, time you're while unhinged. we do the podcast. I'm out of control. Yeah. It'll last for like two days. Wow. Uh, let's, let's binge. Let's binge. <laughs> I need some crack. So, Alan, uh, <laughs> how's the week going? How you been? It's what all you, good. What are you Dude, doing? I got a new office chair today. I got, oh, my, I got my second fucking uh, COVID shot, and then I went to Staples, and I bought a new office chair because yeah. um, my, my extra weight put on during COVID broke my other chair. Uh, yeah. you know, it was just an old, old free chair that started becoming decrepit. So I had to replace it. And uh, before, before the side effects took hold, I put this chair together myself. Yeah. And uh, it only took about 35 minutes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Is it a nice, sturdy, comfy chair? It's a very comfy chair. It is, it's a beauty rest, so careful not to fall asleep at work. Okay. <laughs> now, do those uh, office chairs, do they uh, come with, uh, with a flashlight? Do they no, have an no. office flashlight? But, they, but they do have a couple extra screw holes at the bottom for the attachment that they sell with a flashlight. Oh, So okay. it, it just comes around the side of the chair, and then... Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> the office fuck chair. It's for when you work from home. Yeah. You really work from home. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to thrust into the week, man. You got to you gotta push that paper. Push, yeah. As Mike Wilson would say. Yeah. Um, I saw a guy walking around at Target this morning. I was with my girlfriend. Um, shout out to Boo. Uh, I was with my girlfriend, and she... Um, there was this guy walking around at Target, big dude, uh, and he was in his 50s, and you could tell this dude was big, you know, like big, old, strong. And oh, I think like, he was military because he had a buzz cut, and he was he was wearing a shirt that it said- It was like it, a long lifetime of steroids and press. Just a guy who was worked out yeah. all his life, and, and for him to be that age and still be that buff- it's it's he's probably got pretty strong mental discipline. Yeah, but it's all bone on bone contact. There's no cartilage. Hey, anywhere. he's powering through <laughs> these uh, these squats and sh- and and bench presses with no cartilage. That yeah, takes you don't you don't need cartilage calories. between the fucking bones to be able to you know just let that muscle let that muscle carry the load. The so load. so this uh, <laughs> f- uh, monster of a man, uh, this manly man, uh, six foot, we'll say six foot three, 250, 230, uh, buzz cut. He's wearing a shirt that says, Impeach Biden. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what did he do already? I mean, Impeach Biden, and the guy's been in there for like a month and a half, a yeah. hundred days, whatever it is. Like, yeah, and he's, I, he's fucked up, man. He, oh, the yeah. The whole Suez Canal thing was to try to stop the child pedophiles. Oh, yeah, that's right. There, and, was, uh, there was all kinds of traffic people on that ship in the Suez. And, and they just let him die, up. right? Yeah, man. He didn't even try to save him. He's like, no, we actually are going to put more sand in front of the ship. <laughs> We're going to pack it in. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just wonder why... And I already know why, but I just wonder why someone would wear a shirt like that. If I had had to ask you, excuse me, I got the hiccups. If I had to ask you, uh, why do you think someone would wear a shirt like that, Alan? What is your guess on why someone would wear that shirt? I think I think it's because people, for the most part, online have either, you know, with dissenting opinions, maybe have hidden them, stopped following them, maybe mm-hmm. they're not at friends anymore, and they're not getting the rise out of people that they want to keep getting. Mm-hmm. So you put it out there in public when you go in public. You can't you can't just look at this guy and be like, "Oh, fucking, I don't see that shirt." Do you he think wants he's... to trigger you? John. Oh yeah, do you think he's inviting some sort of conflict, right? Uh yeah, probably. At, at the very minimum, he he wants to come out superior because people he, he must have gotten bored. Do you think uh and I didn't do this, but do you think it would have been a good idea if I walked up to him and said, "Excuse me, sir. Why?" In the world, would you want to impeach Joe Biden? I mean, he doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. He's dementia out. I mean, why would you want to impeach someone? That just seems like cruelty. Yeah, especially when you take into the fact that if you have a president with dementia, like there's several different minds kind of pushing along what he does no, yeah. and influencing policy and all that kind of thing. So, I mean, we're really getting like five or six presidents with <laughs> Biden. But would I really want to, I and I I wish that I had more time to just ask him about that. It's, he should you should have you know you should have said to him what why suck why, it why is uh, the shirt missing some extra words sir um, it should say uh, impeach 
Biden's biting dog. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. He just keeps biting people. Major just keeps <laughs> biting fucking, you know, secretaries of state and press secretaries. And well, I, I told Chuck, Chuck Ruiz, uh, about this, and Chuck said that you should just walk up to him and be like, oh, you're Peach Biden. That's cool. Who's Peach Biden? <laughs> I'm Peach Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's cool. Is that is that like one of Hunter's, like, stepbrothers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I just, um, actually, I felt bad for the guy because obviously he's uh, angry or upset about something to the point where he would invite a challenge. And to me, that's a fascinating psychological place to be. I don't know, just humans. You so know? what happened when you took the challenge? I uh, called him a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what? I didn't have the time to, to ask him about his beliefs, but I was... I was just fascinated by his behavior yeah. and, and just my uh, uh, just his exterior persona <clears throat> versus, you know, who is the, the guy really? Like, maybe he's a sweetheart. Yeah, he probably yeah. watched The Notebook. You think so? Probably. At least, at least one time with a girlfriend or something that he later cheated on. Oh, really? Yeah, probably. Um, like, this movie really sucks. I'm going to hit up this chick. <laughs> Speaking of cheating, um, have, you, uh, have you put any steroids into that pumpkin yet? Yeah. Uh, Where's no, that pumpkin no. s- sit at? These, so for the giant pumpkin project, uh, it's still a GPP. couple. GPP. Yeah, it's still a couple nights out before I can plant anything outside because we before are Before you can lay your seed? No, the seeds are planted. The plants oh, nice. are alive. You've already seeded? I've done the seeding. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Seeding. <laughs> Kurt told me he was watching the draft last night. And I was like, "How long does it take to pour a beer?" Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> anyway, you can check out your episode of In the Rye with Kurt Fletcher right now. Right, that's, that's right. Well, you check out the uh, Albuquerque Gardening page. And ah, yeah. Are you now? Are you posting pumpkin updates to that, or is that more just like other? gardening stuff it's both okay it's both but i'm putting out a longer one piece video that's going to be the entire life of the pumpkin that's going to be way put up way later down the road after the thing is either been eaten by bugs died or fucked fucked. (laughs) but uh yeah no it's still it's still a little too cold too cold at night uh, we're having an unusual spout of cool going into this we first are. week of May where the yep. temperatures are still in the low 40s. So I can't really put out many of my pepper plants, and I can't put out the pumpkin plants because I don't want to risk the cold fucking them up. Oh, yeah. That's, hey, I've already lost a couple squash plants. Climate change. Mm-hmm. Climate change. Uh, yeah. If you don't, hey, if you think that's bullshit, just Fight realize. <laughs> also, I mean. Impeach climate change. Well, I, I don't think any Bring of our viewers Bring that fucker into would, court. Who the fuck thinks climate change is not a real thing? Like, I don't think any of our listeners would ever think that's a thing. No, not our listeners. Well, that's someone not we a have thing. on the soundboard, probably. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, I want to get the Teddy Atlas sound <laughs> back. <laughs> I'm not Teddy Atlas. Um, so, so when is the uh, pumpkin... Uh, a uh, growing contest. When is that uh, climax? Uh, probably middle of September, just based on temperature. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And that's you, Geo, and Devin Tim. Rivera, and Tim Wolf. And that, that's fucking an awesome group, dude. That's yeah, Tim awesome. Wolf's getting a late start because he's way up in, what is it, Illinois? Yeah. Huh. Or Indiana, whatever. Yeah. Of the I states. Yeah. India's having a big uh, COVID problem. <laughs> <laughs> Who says I don't listen? That's that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's almost time to start. Uh, I'm I'm waiting another couple nights uh, before I I put out the hydroponic pumpkin because that one that one is not gonna need as you know warm of temperatures outside for this little bit okay. because the reservoir of water that it'll be sitting in will hold heat gained through the day and let it off in those couple hours where temperatures get a little cooler. So if I just put something on top of it, we're set. Oh, good. Yeah. So we're getting closer. Yeah, it's going to be a front yard pumpkin. We're edging towards the pumpkin. Yeah. Being seed, uh, or being uh, growing, growing, actually growing. Yeah. Well, known fact, you know, well, I guess it's not little known. You know, when you cut open a pumpkin, all the guts and everything, pumpkins make their own lube, so it's ready to be fucked as soon as it's big enough. (laughs) Which ends the butt. (laughs) Whichever one you want. Oh, nice. 
Um, so you got your second vaccine, mm-hmm. and uh, how 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 goes it? Do you have five G yet? Can you five G from your fingers? Uh, not yet, but I'm. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure later on I'll be able to start tapping into that Wi-Fi signal. Has Bill Gates started mentally, uh, telepathically uh, communicating with you? No, but I'm getting update notices in front of my vision. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, like so when you see the little squiggly things. Oh, okay. It's are just you, a whole your system needs to update because this is brand new. Are you gonna have some HUD pretty soon? So, uh, I hope so, man. That'd be fucking. Co- hey, would you take that fucking uh, that chip, that Bill Gates chip uh, that they're putting out pretty soon? <laughs> would you take <laughs> Would you take that into your arm if it would give you a HUD? Yeah, it'd be probably pretty useful in sparring. That would be cool. Huh? Martial arts, yeah. What if you could track your target a lot easier. That would be fucking great. Yeah, man. Also, like, you know, uh, sex and peeing. Yeah. Tracking. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you're not as enthusiastic about it as you should be. This I, is I a great should. thing. Well, you know, I'm I'm feeling the upload happen right now. So <clears throat> oh, gotcha. later on when we're talking to our guest, I won't be feeling it. All right. Well, uh, later on when we talk to our guests later on, because yeah. it'll be the future, yeah. uh, the future when we talk to the guests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how the show works now. Which is, this would be the present. Yeah. And when we talk to the guest, that'll be the future, because we're going to have them on yeah. in just a minute. And, and, and we'll be any, talking to them. And if any them. viewers notice, like, a lighting shift or anything <laughs> like that, just consider it an Easter egg in the programming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an insemination yeah. egg. I mean, an Easter egg. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Nice. Is that it? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to our guest, Fred Hawks. Fred Hawks, bring him in. Come on, Fred. Ah. Okay, it's because Alan's like, we're gonna play the fucking intro before anyway. Uh-huh. So why are you playing the intro again? But my whole point was, and I know this is a fascinating discussion, but my whole point is that uh, that it just it made it feel official. Okay. Potential Problems <laughs> Podcast. Uh, I'm John Quayar. That is. I, but but this what? is. What? We've I know. already done an intro. I know. Okay. Uh, second intro. This my is name is just, Dusty no, Chaferson. This, Dusty is, Chaferson. Just, this is just. <laughs> I come from the desert and I don't use lotion. <laughs> I'm a dry jerk. See, this is just to get the feeling started. Okay. And okay. you can't just be like, Fred Hawks, you ever walked into a room and someone's just like, fuck me? You're like, yeah, I mean, I know it's happened a lot, but yeah, like. But usually they make you put the money in an envelope first, but. Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that's a form <laughs> of well, four. Those room. That's a form of foreplay, and that's all I want here to start the show is a little little verbal foreplay. You know, we say, hey, welcome to Potential Problems Podcast. I'm John Quayar. That is Alan Clark. Our guest today, Fred Hawks. Fred Hawks, how's it going? How you been, pal? I'm super duper. Glad to see you guys. Well, actually, I don't see you right now. Should I be seeing you? I don't know. It's okay. No, um, well, a- actually, we should explain that to the audience. This will not be visual because Alan and no, it's I. Visual. It's visual on the show. Oh, it's so. just not, he's just not, because of a home issue. Gotcha. So the okay. audience will see you, Fred, so don't uh, pick your nose unless you really get hungry. But <laughs> the audience will see you. So just a heads up, it's just you can't see us. But when All Alan right. puts this together, uh, you will see us, and we'll have flames and fucking lasers and be fucking nuts, bro. Yeah, what well, specific color of lasers do you I got my favorite comedian, Brian Regan, by, behind me here. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Have you, uh, uh, when's the last time you've seen t- uh, Brian Regan? Oh, shit. It's probably been like four years, but I've seen him a total of nine times. So I followed him all over the country. I've seen him in Boston and Denver and Chicago and New Mexico. And really? You know, I guess multiple times in each one. So, yeah. Were, he's they different, the were they different sets each time for him? Oh, yeah. He keeps it, he keeps it new. I figured, I figured, and you know the crazy thing about um, about him is that Regan's just been successful in touring and fucking funny and relevant for almost fucking 35, 40 years. How many yeah. comics can do that? And all, always keeping it clean, you know? I mean, yeah. uh, similar to Cosby, other than uh, there's probably some differences, 
Um, oh yeah, because yeah. we kept it clean <laughs> <laughs> on stage. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Now I appreciate you guys having me on. I just uh, like I was telling you, I came from a tour downtown. I went and checking things uh, out, get, getting live back there. I stopped at Bosey Brothers, followed by Red Door, followed by Bourbon and Boots. So all of that has some Albuquerque comedy history, you know? Yeah, of two, course. Two, two of those have had uh, open mics uh, long running, and then one used to be a comedy club. So, Oh, yeah, of course. Funny feeling. Do things feel rejuvenated, in your opinion? Uh, they're getting there. Um, you know, I, not to be a, a political uh, pain in the ass, but uh, it, it, as soon as we can get rid of these masks, then we'll be on our way to actual normalcy. But, you know, just walking along the street, you don't have to put it on but then you know when you when you walk into the club you got to put it on for a little while and uh, you know aside from the condoms you got to do that with the mask too uh, <laughs> uh, keep it normal yeah as normal as it can be I mean have you noticed in your and this is I mean I'm not gonna bullshit bullshit you here buddy let's let's play it straight up well I love fucking people. I mean, I love people. I mean, I love fucking people too, but I love people just when I'm not fucking them. Like even uh, like yeah. just people I don't know. I love to see them have a good time. And it makes me sad when other people are sad and I, I don't care whether I like them or not. I want them to be happy, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. And have you noticed uh, how happy people look going outside again and being able to hang out with their friends? Uh, have you seen a little bit of that in your travails downtown? Yeah, absolutely. And, and elsewhere, I mean, uh, uh, not to, to be, uh, um, I don't know, uh, overwhelming about this or, or, or alarmist or something, but I think we're all a little bit mentally ill after a year and a half of this shit. Um, so it's just everybody's healing themselves and, and their different pace and their different ways. So yeah, going downtown on a warm day, uh, the first day that we were in the, the governor's made up shit of green, whatever that is, um, seeing more people, seeing a packed uh, bourbon and boots, seeing a relatively yeah. packed red door and, and kind of a, a not less, uh, not, not as packed uh, Bur or uh, Rosie Brothers. It was really a good thing, you know. So there's a lot of things going on downtown. So people should head down there. Is uh, is Bourbon and Boots the skeleton of the uh, the once uh, the infant Sid's case of of the uh, the former spot of the the comedy vault? Is that is that, that what that is? Well, I don't know if skeletons the right word because they actually did a better job. You know, uh, 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 it's a lot better looking than it was during the comedy vault days, but I mean, it's all been a transition, but yeah, I, I looked over and saw where the stage used to be a little bit next to where their music stage is now. That's where the comedy stage was for all of two weeks for the comedy vault. So, uh, I, Hey, Hey Fred, I love people, but I did, <laughs> I did not love the, uh, Sam Kennison tribute artist that, uh, that Kimothy booked. And I just, I had just have to ask you, <laughs> You know, when you see that as one of the, like, first acts, and I, I mean, hey, God bless everybody who wants to try comedy. Even if you're a tribute comic, that's fucking awesome. But maybe booking a tribute comic uh, of that ilk uh, in the first couple weeks, like, did you, did you see that and maybe think, I mean, did you see that guy's act at all? I saw that guy's act when he was booked and when he was performing, so it was a little bit too late. It wasn't like I had some type of... Uh... No, you know, I veto right on it, but no. I mean, he, for a Sam Kennison tribute act, I guess he was good. But you know, at the same time, it's like that was twenty years ago. Not a lot of people get it. I mean, Sam Kennison was was a legend and uh, uh, something worth noting if you're if you're a comedy enthusiast. But uh, it wasn't necessarily something you want to uh, come out of uh, and see. Uh, I will say, however, for the two weeks that the Comedy Vault was in operation, the feature or, or headline comedians that they had on the two weekends you know that they were really selling were pretty mm -hmm. good i i awesome. forgive me i forget their names right now but i saw one of them <laughs> that and, good and, huh? and they were really yeah. good um it's just that you know when somebody doesn't pay their rents uh, uh my my friend who owned the building who's an asshole he just finally said <laughs> you know, if, if, if you're not gonna pay me i guess i gotta shut you down i don't love comedy that much well, yeah, I mean, fuck, it's business, dude. I mean, sure, you want to see something succeed, but uh, it's business when it comes down to it. And uh, I just want to say that uh, I really like you, and uh, uh, I never had any bad feelings about that. And I uh, just wanted to say I'm, 
I'm glad that we're still able to remain friends because you're one of my one of my favorite people. I say that so often to a lot of people in the comedy <laughs> scene, but it's really true. I really have so many favorite people in this scene. So just wanted to put that out there. And while we're on the subject of uh, unpaid rent, uh, I wanted to ask, you mentioned Dory last week. Dory <laughs> now is uh, hosting uh, the comedy shows at the illustrious Red Velvet. I love performing comedy. I just want to put that out there. I'll be glad to perform at Red Velvet. I love that place and I love Dory. But uh, you did mention that uh, maybe there's a little bit of history where she's uh, maybe uh, moved around a couple times. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, that, I guess I kind of mixed up my two hats there. My uh, comedy hat, my, my landlord hat. Um, you know, the reality is that she, she stiffed a lot of people. I <laughs> uh, wish I could say the same. Um, no, uh, when, she, she has another business called, what is it? Uh, pink Rhino where she, yeah. it's, I guess it's consignment clothing. And I guess her, her, uh, her business plan was just to move around to different locations, see if it worked, uh, okay. not pay rent and then move <laughs> along, <laughs> uh, which is fine. You know, uh, part of it is, is you learn a lesson as a business person is that, uh, everyone's always afraid of getting sued, but yeah. the reality is even if you get sued and like the person suing you wins, uh, the stuff they can do to actually collect your money is uh, very limited. So um, I, I respect Dory for uh, allowing comedy and for you know continuing on with her business. But she also taught me a valuable lesson that having a, a, a court judgment against somebody for money isn't worth jack shit. So <laughs> might, might as well just you know move along in your life. Yeah, well that, that's cool. That's cool. And then would you? I just I was curious. Would you ever perform at that venue? You know, I would. I mean, um, uh, when when you perform comedy, it's all just about uh, the art form and uh, 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 making sure that the people who come out have fun. Um, so it, uh, I have no uh, qualms against them. Um, cool. My my problem as a comedian is being able to get out enough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's just from my personal life right now, um, and it's probably temporary. You know, something will change in the future. But when, when I'm at my best as a comedian, I'll go out anywhere. I'll, I'll uh, do anything. I mean, uh, you and I, John, uh, going a few years back, I mean, you used to have a, an open mic on Friday nights at uh, Louis. Oh, <laughs> my God. How uh, dare you bring that up? Yeah, one, you're right. Did I hear one night we, we cracked uh, the open mic for basically what uh, was a wake. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad you were there. Ever. Coolest night ever. I remember you, you, were, you were up there getting it started and uh, – uh, somehow you, you found the uh, um, path to make a cancer joke and uh, some dude <laughs> yeah. up front gave you kind of like the no, 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 this dude died of cancer and you, <laughs> you gave yourself the hook <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then I got to uh, dive in after you. So, you know, if you can go in that kind of shit, you can perform anywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was definitely one of the most memorable, memorable times uh, when we were running an open mic and. You know, I'm I'm glad to see that uh, someone that's uh, as professional as uh, as you can be at times uh, can also delve into the world of comedy, uh, and then kind of hit that that stride too. I I think that's kind of cool. I uh, that appeals to me uh, um, in a uh, to a certain extent because I do the same thing. You know, I have this daily professional life where you you have to get things done. You have to assassinate many many high ranking people yeah smother yeah. so many patients and <laughs> here's the thing is you know you put in your time you work hard and honestly i like people who work hard uh whether it's you know digging a ditch or doing construction or just getting numbers right and uh, having uh, having to manage different businesses and properties and so to be able to do that during the day and then jump into comedy at night that's i think that's really uh really pretty amazing now you got uh, you got to do comedy the for, for the first time in 14 months, you said? Yeah, I mean, I remember it was January. I'd already kind of slowed down on comedy just, again, because of stuff in the personal life. But uh, I think January 2020, this last time I'd, I'd done it at uh, Red Door, it was fun. And uh, I don't know if you guys uh, experienced the same thing. I mean, maybe this is just my mind playing tricks on me, but it's like uh, it, it felt like something weird was coming. And uh, e even in January, and then lo and behold, yeah, it really did happen. And, uh, you know, once uh, March arrived, uh, I mean, for basically the whole rest of the year, I mean, I, uh, I haven't felt too funny whatsoever. So, um, yeah, yeah I, did, I didn't uh, write too many jokes into my phone. I didn't, uh, 
work on anything. I mean, it's, it's really only started to come around uh, lately where I've gone back to even look at my sets, kind of remember what I was as a comedian and, and trying to get back there. But uh, uh, I'm anxious to get to that point. I th- I, and I think the time off was good for a lot of people. Um, my, myself, uh, you know, I know, I know for myself, it was pretty good because uh, I got to evaluate myself as a stand up and what I honestly wanted to do out there and how I wanted to present myself a little bit, you know, I don't know. I, I put more thought into that, I think, than I ever had. And, and so I think that was good for me. Did, did you find that, uh, that time off changed your view on comedy or changed your view on who? who your narrative persona is out there? I think so. I mean, um, and and not to get cheesy, but uh, everybody knows uh, Steve Martin, okay? And I mean, mean, and those of us who are Gen Xers. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I know, I know. But like you and me, John, we're Gen Xers, you know, and maybe Alan's a millennial, but you think of kind of Steve (laughs) Martin as this old old man's comedian or whatever. But the reality is that dude, he was the hugest... um, stand-up comedian back in the 70s. I mean, he yeah. was selling out albums and, and stadiums and everything. It was just amazing. And I remember one something he said one time when he was coming out of the late 60s when it was a really bad time in America, you know, s- similar to what we're going through right now. And he used to do a lot of political humor and that kind of stuff. And what he said was that he just abandoned all that and he went absolutely silly. That's why he was doing like the arrow through the head shit, you know, just oh, yeah. ridiculous stuff on, on stage. So it was an injury. you just made the most of you know Um, but no uh, that's a little bit that's that's kind of where I want to go like like um, I think now I have the confidence as a comedian that I didn't used to have where I can I can look at things that's in my set that are in my set list and think okay that's funny but I don't want to talk about race I don't want to talk about uh, 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 controversial shit whatsoever I I want people to have fun when they come out I'm going to talk about absolutely ridiculous stuff so oh, I can throw, throw things out of my set list that, uh, um, you know, that kind of walk that line of controversial stuff. I don't even want to play with that anymore. And we're just going to be ridiculous from here on out. So that, that, that's kind of my mode of approaching things. And it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's like a fresh start in comedy to like it's been a year or 14 months or whatever it was. I mean, for me, it was pretty much almost a year uh, uh, at least. And mm-hmm. um you you go out there and you're able to to do it again and make a fresh start. And uh, I saw uh, Steve Costa in the audience, uh, and uh, Steve and big I were never oh he was a big fan of the show. But Comments on our stuff all the time. <laughs> well, he he did at one time. He tried to troll us. Yeah, <laughs> but even the, who cares? That's the thing is I don't give a fuck because I was happy to see that guy out there. And I could tell that he had had probably just like everybody else, this human experience of just fucking horribleness during COVID, whether it, it, you got sick with it or somebody else. And I was genuinely glad to see that Steve Costa was uh, there at, a, at an open mic and I got to talk to him and we had a pretty good time. Again, we were the only the first two comics that were there for a little bit. So it was kind of like good to see another friendly comics face at Kerry Jokey, uh, Kerry Jokey. <laughs> And um, and so I, I don't know. What did you do to prepare for your set that day? You, did you write down your set? Did you listen to an old set? I found myself listening to a lot of old my old stuff. What about you? Yeah, I mean, my, my preparation throughout you know the, the five six years I've been in comedy now is just I have it written, and I before I do a set, I, I pick it uh, and kind of make the set a, a day or two ahead of time. And so my goal then was just to. Um, uh, get out there. So I did some of my kind of tried and true jokes. I think I opened with something that was absolutely new. Uh, let's see if I can uh, do it. I, I talked about my wife getting uh, her uh, COVID shot. <laughs> and and I asked my, and I said, I asked my wife, uh, um, oh, did it, did, did it hurt? And she said, no, Fred, I haven't had a little prick that was that quick and painless <laughs> since our wedding night. <laughs> So, so I did that one new bit and then the rest of it was just stuff I'd been doing for like three years. Uh, the po- whole point was to get up there and, and tell jokes. Yeah, of uh, course. And, uh, and so then we'll, we'll move baby steps beyond that. You know, I mean, because you guys are probably the same where I think back on the way uh, things used to be. And when I was at my uh, best, I mean, I was doing um, new stuff for 20 minutes in front of uh, 100, 200 people. 
Um, and now you just want to get back out there and do uh, something in front of uh, 10 people and, and make your way back. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, mm -hmm. I hope to make it my way back to 15 or 20 people, you know, and headlining <laughs> for about 30 minutes. That's where I'm comfortable at, uh, mm -hmm. especially locally. I don't know. Here's the thing. I'd love to go on the road, but I'm fucking old and I like comfort. And I see my friends going on the road and they're young. I think the road road work is a young man's game. Maybe once I'm done working professionally or maybe I'll, I'll dabble, you know, on the road. But fuck, I'm not going to go out on the road for two months. What am I going to tell my boss? I mean, my yeah, boss I mean, is going to be cool with that. that. That reality hit me a couple of months or a couple of years rather after I started comedy. I mean, obviously I have a, a daytime profession and a, a family and stuff like that. And it finally got to where I, I was happy to be having enough success where it's like, well, if I'm going to do something with this comedy thing, it's got to be something more. It's got to be something going on the road. You, get, you have to do the real professional stuff that the successful comedians do, uh, all the uh, offstage stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and to, to truly look at yourself and go, well, I'm, I'm not prepared to do that is, is a big step. And you, do, you don't want to make an excuse. You don't want to be pointing at other people. I, I point entirely myself. I made the choice not to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was being uh, successful, I was getting opportunities and could have taken it to the next level. But, um, you know, my family is not at a point where I can take that. But um, my particular thing is I just want to sustain until, you know, my uh, daughters are old enough and to where I can then make that choice whether I wanna uh, go on the road more and do those uh, offstage things that are important to being a comedian now. Um, and you know, to that end, not to kiss you guys' asses, but I mean, uh, 400 uh, shows of uh, uh, the podcast, I mean, that's just extraordinary now that I realize you know, what that really takes. Oh, hey, thanks. Yeah, it's just basically showing up every week. Some weeks they're great. Other <laughs> weeks, Alan and I are like, fuck, we got to do it. We just got to yeah. do it, man. We can't not do it unless something, unless there's a reason. Right, yeah. Alan? Yeah. Usually dead people. <laughs> 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 like, we would even do holidays there for a while, so, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, for yeah. Uh, until until Alan got married, you know, and once you get married, <laughs> them holidays are sacred, you know. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Is that right, Fred? Do you enjoy the uh, get together with the in-laws uh, during the holidays? Are you on good terms with the in-laws there? Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if I had to give any advice to people getting married, it's like uh, invest in who your in-laws are. Because <laughs> uh, because I'm very lucky that uh, I got some good ones, but uh, you know my my brother and some other people I've seen have uh, they chose poorly as they they say <laughs> in, uh, in uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, but no, I got really good ones, so we we have great holidays. So uh, it's one of those where I guess I'm blessed that my family life is so wonderful. Because if it wasn't, then shit, I would probably be out there traveling the road, being a comedian, and uh, and uh, creating all sorts of nonsense. Did it, did it take you a while to be happy uh, as a family man? I know, like, when I first found out I was going to be a dad, I freaked out for, like, two years. Are you and... saying when he realized he gave up? Yeah, when did you realize you gave up on, you know, all your dreams and decided that it, would, it was about elevating your family? Because that's basically where I'm at, too, my friend. No, I don't know. Your priorities shift, right? Yeah, it does. And, and you know, and what it doesn't happen overnight. Um, a lot of people think that that like they get married or they have a kid and all of a sudden overnight they're supposed to be this different person. It takes a while for the old you to uh, to burn out and, and to get into the, the new you. Uh, but that's fine. You know, you take your time and uh, uh, everything will work out. I mean, it's not like you're going to be 45 and just, you know, drinking straight Patron on a, a podcast. <laughs> <or something. laughs> Well, I think the last time that you you came over, didn't you brought quite a bit of alcohol? At least the first time you were on the podcast, right? I don't remember, so that must be true. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know whether it was the first or second time, but it was uh, during a snowstorm. Do you guys remember really? that? And I, I think we had uh, uh, Don on, and uh, anyway, it was a fun time. I just I uh, I thought that's what uh, we were supposed to be doing. So yeah, oh, yeah, that was definitely that era of the show. <laughs> Uh, Alan, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but I, I actually did stop drinking due to uh, legal situations. Oh. But uh, uh, I, I, I thought you were just being no fun. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's it, too. I'm a prude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so, um, you know, I, I basically uh, don't drink a whole lot, if ever, maybe like once or twice every six months, which is a big change for me, you know, because for a long time I was drinking quite a bit. 
you know. And you know, we've been thinking about going to back to a show format where we just drink for the show and get what, hammered. What is this we? <laughs> this is something you keep pitching. Yeah, so I think that if we do that, we should definitely get you in on one of those episodes. Yeah. That would be one of those live episodes. So we got in, we've gone into a little bit of a kind of a, I guess you could say a format shift. We used to do everything live. And now we're trying to make the content a little bit more digestible for people who may not know Albuquerque, Albuquerque comedy. So that but maybe also they, for promotional. Oh, and purposes. for promotional it's a lot purposes. easier to put. Yeah, um, I, I heard you guys talking about that. You got some sponsors. Was that for real or? You, you, uh, I got I got an affiliation code with ChairsForGaming.com <laughs> where you can save ten percent by using the code word DiddyZig at checkout. DiddyZig at checkout of gaming. That's where you can bet on like what. Uh, uh, sports and shit. Uh, it's a it's a it's a video game chair website. Okay. A video game chair yeah. website. That's pretty specific. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> till my yeah. Sponsor, wait till my sponsorship for blue light uh, blocking glasses comes through. Oh, I nice. Apply for one of those too. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, it's just no, that, uh, yeah. That's that's wonderful that you guys got that. No, no. And seriously, that uh, I mean, sometimes if you want to talk about drinking uh, and comedy together, I think that's a legitimate topic because. Uh, I, you know, I've seen that uh, uh, for since I've been doing comedy is that it's, it's something to be thought about because you got some comedians who just because of lifestyle, you're out there late, you know, you want to you want to get a little bit uh, loose before you get on stage, whatever. Uh, yeah. A lot of them end up uh, drinking too much. And it's, and it's a problem. I mean, even if you go back and you look at like the history of the comedy store and that kind of stuff, uh, you get into cocaine and just, you know, all those uh, those drugs ruined a lot of people who would be uh, great comics. Um, a little known fact is that I actually grew up with Freddie Prinze Jr. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, Freddie Prinze Jr. and I, we were in kindergarten together through middle school. Uh, he would probably still remember my name if, if, if uh, he was asked. If he didn't have that um, big, oh, Freddie Prinze Jr. I thought, okay, I was thinking about seeing her. Yes, Freddie Prinze no, no, Jr. No, no, I mean, which is weird because, you know, as a little kid, you don't know. Like, I go, I went no. over to his house to play Connect Four when I was in first grade. And, I mean, you don't know where's Freddie's dad and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you look back at the the uh, history, and I mean, his dad was such a famous comedian, uh, but burned out really early. I mean, I think he died in his early twenties after being uh, kind of welcomed in as the new Rat Pack and stuff. So it just goes to show that uh, there there's uh, power and longevity. Um, you know, the the other comedians who didn't get into that stuff, uh, um, whether it's a uh, Seinfeld or Shanling, um, uh, oh, yeah. they lasted for a lot longer. I get. <laughs> the guy from Ultimate Fighter. I mean, was yeah. a Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, I I'm glad that I I kind of came through it. I really think like I I missed out on so many great opportunities by just drinking and not focusing on just the art of comedy and being mm -hmm. a little bit afraid uh to delve into the art of comedy and not succeed because I I thought it was such a such a lofty goal. It was so noble, but uh, ignoble, but I don't know. It's just really cool. And then after getting a little bit older, I, I'm like, well, you know, I, it would be great to tour, you know, but at the same time, it's great to have health care. It's <laughs> great to have a steady salary. It's also nice to do an open mic on a vacation spot. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, but you know, I will say about comedy that of all the things I've experienced in my life, and I mean, I'm a lawyer, licensed in two states, uh, and done some business and that kind of stuff. Uh, more than anything in my life, it, it's something that responds to the work that you put in more than anything. Good point. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, I'm actually not, I'm by far not the funniest person I know in my family or in my, my group of friends. I, uh, I'm usually just a listener, but if you actually put in the work, I mean, and, and John, you pay me a compliment one time, you know, also at that uh, um, open mic we used to do at Louis there where, you, you know, you said, Fred, you put a lot of work into your comedy. And um, yeah. that, that goes a, a long way. And you look at the comedians who are successful, whether it's Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, you know, you just go down the line. Bill Cosby. Yeah, Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah, he was working a little, I mean, he's <laughs> <laughs> working himself blind. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you put in that work and, uh, and, and you don't even have to be the funniest person in the room to succeed uh, uh, in that thing. And, you know, that's more than anything I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, growing up, I was a basketball player and I put a hell of a lot of work into that. Uh, but ultimately, I sucked because, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, same five, here. Yeah, five foot ten and a half and not, not too fast. Do you still play at all? Do you still shoot around? 
I still shoot around, but, uh, you know, ultimately when, when you're 45 years old, like I am, uh, eventually the prospect of injury becomes too daunting. Oh like, yeah. Like when you're a kid, you know, you twist an ankle or something. It's like, okay, you might not play for a few weeks, but whatever. But like, you know, when you got kids and a job and, and shit to do, you know, if you blow your knee out like that, like your wife gets mad at you. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I experienced yeah. a few times when I was playing ball. Like I would uh, twist my ankle and come home and think I'd get sympathy and she'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you can't you can't pick up the baby, you can't like bring in the groceries and shit. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I guess I, I can't get hurt anymore. I mean, maybe she'd let you off the hook once, but if you keep doing it, throwing yourself <laughs> in front of a cars like you're a Russian uh, scamster, then yeah. you may not be able to get away with it for too long. Uh, I want to ask you before I forget. I see, and I'm pointing to the uh, Mazzy Star plaque in, uh, behind you. Uh, that is one of my favorite bands of all time. I named my dog Mazzy after that band. She was one of the greatest dogs of all time. And uh, do you are you a huge fan? Are you how long how long have you been listening to them? I guess I'm an adequate fan, and that I've always thought that they were really underrated. I just I, amen, even, brother. Yeah, even their their most famous song, which is uh, was a uh, uh, fade into you, which is a good song. It's not even their best song by any means. Yeah. And you know, that's what I listen to when I relax. And uh, um, the man who's the, the one of the leaders of the band, he passed away this last year. So that's, I was going to ask bad. you about that. Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, when you get to this age, you're like, uh, if I've been liking something for 20, 30 years, uh, regardless of whether other people like it as much, I mean, uh, it's something I'm going to appreciate. So, yeah, I got a lot of things on my wall. I got them. I got uh, Brian Regan. I got uh, George Carlin right yeah. here. I got... Um, Oh, uh, what is her name? A uh, Cindy Locker right here. Nice. I think she's she's really underrated. And then here's the Beastie Boys with yeah. uh, Beastie you know, Yeah, dude, did you hear their last album before uh, what's his face died? Yeah, that last... was pretty good. Uh, a, Hot Sauce really Committee, good, right? Yeah, there's a couple of really I mean, good I, songs on there. Yeah, I, I don't know offhand, uh, you know, which particular songs on there, but uh, you know, they've always been real. Make big some noise. Um, yeah, they made that long music video with oh, Elijah Wood. Yeah, it has like Elijah people. Wood and <laughs> Seth Rogen in it playing them, dude. It's, it's have you ever seen that video? Up. No, I haven't. It's dope, man. You should check it out. Uh, it's like, it's pretty much like a, a mix between like a short film and a music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh yeah. So Mazzy Star. I didn't want to see. I was gonna ask you about the guitarist passing, but I didn't want to seem like those one of those guys. Is like trying to quiz you on your knowledge like did you hear about you know but yeah the guy died uh, last year and it was pretty crazy because on the facebook post mazzy star or hope sandoval who is mm -hmm. like the lead singer uh mazzy star posted um my friend passed away i'm heartbroken mm. i'm something else blah blah Some blah other sentimental yada shit. yada yada uh <laughs> But um, and I was talking uh, with Kurt about this. Maybe you can offer your uh, perspective. <clears throat> You're 45, as you uh, admitted to. I'm 42. Excuse me, 43 now. Whoa! And I'm trying uh, to skip back a year, eh? One of the things that I think is, I mean, there are good things to aging, but one of the things, the sad things about aging, is not how you change, but how the world you know changes. I mean, Britney Spears is going through menopause right now, and I don't know how I feel about that. RuPaul's already gone through menopause, <laughs> and so I'm kind of weird on that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think about that? Do you is it does it bum you out when you see all these people that have kind of how the world has changed because they've left the world? Or I mean, do you think about that a lot? Well, you know what I've noticed about uh, uh, postmenopausal authors <laughs> is uh, they prefer to use semicolons because they're all out of periods. <laughs> Um, but uh, now beyond that, uh, no, it, it doesn't really bum me out. I mean, uh, yeah, things change, but at the same time, I mean, I, I know you got a daughter, well, she, she's probably graduated high school by now. Um, and I got uh, two daughters, uh, a teenager and, you know, a 10 year old. So you kind of start seeing the world for them yeah. and, and, that, and that's fine. I mean, um, and I was telling my wife this recently, and one of the reasons I think I was so upset by the pandemic and I, I got in touch with this recently and it, it's a weird thing is that. I feel guilty that um, we let our world get into this this way. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and, and my thing is you know, mostly about the government, not necessarily about the pandemic, that we let um, these kind of restrictions uh, and nonsense be put upon us. And we didn't have the strength to uh, protect our children from this. Um, but, you know, once I got in, in, in touch with the fact that I was feeling guilty about that and that it's not really uh, a reasonable guilt, 
uh, I got beyond it. And it's just, you, you got to lead your children to better times. And, you know, most of the times I got to say that the, they've been smiling, you know, today is another day they've been smiling. So I, I guess I did something right. Yeah. I, I think for the most part, they're, they're pretty, uh, resilient. You know, I think they're more adaptable than us as, as adults, because we're attached to these things and experiences that we've known for so long, whereas kids, everything's pretty fresh and new to them. So they're you know, more, more, uh, apt to just kind of like, Oh, that's a bummer. And then keep going, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I had in school suspension for like two weeks. Oh at one shit. Point in like sixth or seventh grade. And yeah. Uh, yeah, man. That became life. Did some hard became, time. Yeah, huh? I became king of when we would go out and walk the track prison sex. Uh, no, but I, I, would, uh, I also got in, I got in more trouble in in school suspension because I sh- during one day when we were walking the track, nobody frisked me for my phone, and I was showing a couple kids some naked pictures. Oh shit, of and, guys. Uh, <laughs> well, no, because if I if that was the case, I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Oh, you're because, like, here's Robert Reed. Check yeah, this out. Yeah, well, well so one of, the, one of the kids I was showing it to uh, had an issue with it and ratted me out. Oh, and so shit. I was already in there for a week, and they're like, "All right, you get another week." Or, and then my parents made me look up; they made me show them where I found the picture. Show oh, really? What you've oh. done? <laughs> Talk about embarrassing! Oh man, that's... so yes, I was very adaptable. That I, be- I became the king of that in-school suspension that week. <laughs> Did Did you know, what, had... What's kind of weird is. Uh... Uh, I don't know if you guys have a particular date from where you me- measure that, like the uh, pandemic started happening, but uh, I measure it from March 11th, 2020, uh, which was a, a Wednesday. And uh, part of it's ironic because that's actually a day where I had a guy come in from uh, Phoenix, uh, a guy named Tom, nice guy. He owns a comedy club out there, a very successful one. And he's interested in opening one here in Albuquerque. So we were looking at some sites and just talking about comedy mm-hmm. and we just could kind of feel that things were changing and of course he hasn't had any interest uh in this last year because things have been so suppressed but um uh i do still think that that uh, albuquerque warrants a comedy club just like you used to have when we were kids you know laughs comedy club my uh, cousin was a manager there when i was All in right. high school so she used to let me in uh, and i got to go see comedians i didn't drink you know didn't do anything illegal but i got to take a date there uh, when i was like 16 years old oh that's and- cool man yeah, and uh, we saw other comedians like Richard Jenny, you know, the legend, and uh, um, Polly Shore. And it was a fun time. Um, my buddy took a, a 16-year-old date there, too. Uh, maybe you've heard of him, Chris D'Elia. Uh, he was, <laughs> he was, he was 35 me. at the time. I, well, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just talking about, you know, he was telling me. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think people are excited for comedy to come back. Uh, and... Um, I don't know. Are you going to go into a movie theater anytime soon? Have you missed that? I miss movie theaters, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would go into a movie theater a long time ago. I mean, I've been lucky. I've been I've been fully vaccinated, second shot since January 26th. So I've been mm-hmm. kind of sitting on my hands waiting for the world to, to come back. Uh, so I'd love to go to a movie theater anytime. Um, I probably will the next uh, week or two, see what's up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do think uh, Albuquerque will have a comedy club eventually. I mean, as much as I don't care for the governor and what she's done, one thing that did happen this last legislative session was they uh, they kind of mixed up the um, uh, liquor laws here in New Mexico mm-hmm. uh, so that uh, it, it might be more realistic for there to be a comedy club that has like a full liquor license and for that to be yeah. affordable for somebody. And uh, I think it will happen. It was like a quarter million dollars, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, my friend uh, Doug Peterson, who is an asshole, like I said, uh, he he has uh, two um, liquor licenses, and so those probably dropped in value. But um, well, he must drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he only drinks from his own liquor licenses, which is great. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, those, those have dropped in value, but um, they were really expensive. I mean, uh, uh, some people pay a quarter million, over three hundred thousand dollars to acquire them, and then other people got to lease them and that kind of stuff. And you got to do a significant volume to uh, warrant that. So that's one of the reasons that comedy clubs don't really work in New Mexico anymore. But, you know, those things have changed last year. We'll see how that all shakes out. Now that now somebody can open up a weed only comedy. Oh, fuck. Because that's also going to be a thing where they have those common spaces to where, where you can meet up for that. Uh, 
Fred, how are you with the uh, with the weeds? Are you? Uh, I know you you don't partake because uh, I've never seen you in our circle before. But I know you enjoy, you know, just hanging outside of the circle and chatting with the comics, you know, as they uh, blaze to oblivion. Do you think it makes them stupider, like they would go to Jupiter next? <laughs> Maybe, dude. Like, I've only done it one time, and that was uh, a few years ago. I did one and a half edibles because my, my uh, friend suggested it. And never, never in my life have I felt stupid like that. Like, I'm sure I've been stupid, you know, especially when I drink or something like that. But, you know, when you drink and you're stupid, you feel like you're smart. Uh, this this is one where I took those edibles and after a while, like I was dumb and I knew I was dumb and I was like, like actually afraid of people taking advantage of me and such. And uh, I drove my friend home. I remember I, we went up to Sandia Heights and I dropped him off and I'd, I'd done that, uh, you know, uh, dozens of times, but I didn't know how to get home. And so I, <laughs> I, I fucking put my own address into my uh, GPS and oh, I was shit. just like. I'm going to do everything this computer lady says until I get home because uh, I'm an idiot. So, yeah, I don't I don't want to uh, do any more of the edibles or uh, the smoke or anything like that. But uh, 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 more power to people who do it. You know, does the smell bother you? Are you a fan of the smell or do you think it smells like shit? No, I don't mind the smell at all, dude. Like man, when I was a freshman in uh, college, I lived in a quad. There were four of us oh, yeah. cool. and, uh, and two of my roommates, you know, they're big smokers. And I remember at that time, you know, I never felt more hilarious in my life because I wouldn't smoke and they would. And I'd be like telling jokes and they would just be laughing their ass off. And be like, Man, I'm really fucking funny. Uh, but then they were just high the whole time. But I, I, I miss that smell. I went, went to sleep in a haze of, uh, you know, uh, marijuana smell all the time. So during the uh, pandemic, did you um, like I, I, I kind of diverted my my energies into school and to like almost like diving into my job because of the uh, the way things happened my job got incredibly busy and um so that was kind of what i delved into what what about you what did you was it family mostly or uh what else did you kind of throw yourself into since comedy wasn't around well the family was there which was, was wonderful but at the same time i mean uh exercise i mean i, I probably got yes. uh, better, better shape than i ever did you know just running around and being, being stressed. Um, you know, other hobbies, I sued the governor in, uh, uh, September. So that took a little while. She touched um, you? Did she, did she dump water on your crotch? <laughs> oh, you're the guy. Oh my God. <laughs> no, but I don't know if you guys saw, but, uh, as Fred Hawks, I had the most successful post I'd ever had uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the comments would disagree. <laughs> no, well, no. If you look at the, if you look at the uh, number, of, but I did a, I, I was a little drunk one night and I did a sponsored post um, <laughs> on Facebook. And I was like, well, if Facebook actually approves this, then it's worth the money. And <laughs> goddamn, I, I'd be surprised they approved it. Oh, shit. Um, what I did was I, I used that, uh, you know, like that Barack Obama picture where it said hope, you know, and it was all uh, red, white, and blue and like uh, abstracted. And I, I changed that to uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham and it just said grope. <laughs> And then, then I, I said, uh, we've, we've gone from a uh, hope and change to groping strange. <laughs> and I, and I did a spot and it got 1600 responses. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So that, that was fun for a while. You should have edited your, uh, your post and put, uh, this is where I'll be performing and you get a shit ton <laughs> of them to come out. No, Hopefully but, most uh, of the good ones, the ones that like you will come out. I think there would be interesting, uh, but that would be one way to get the crowd out. I'd be tempted to do that myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there are a lot of people, of course, who didn't, li didn't like that. And, and maybe that's the opposite of what I talked about, about, you know, trying to just be apolitical and, and be silly. But uh, it definitely got a lot of response in New Mexico. Well, some it brought some people joy. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, I would let I would let her grab my crotch if that meant that we could just go back to normal. I mean, I, I don't mind whatsoever. So, so <laughs> just so because I know uh, um, uh, Fox News has uh, put out uh, multiple statements about potential problems podcast. Oh, sure, uh, saying that we're we're nothing but a leftist news uh, wannabe organization <laughs> talk show, and in the interest of you know just showing that we are fair and balanced as uh, Fox News used to be. Are we going all right? No, no, uh, I just want to say I know nothing. I didn't know anything about uh, uh, MLG's, uh, uh, if you will, MLG's uh, lawsuit. 
Uh, and so I, I think you might even be more of an authority than anybody else I know. What did she do? Can you break that down? Do you know anything about the specifics? Did you read the, the – I just read the blurb on the brief summary of it. Was there a courtroom doll that had to be shown where it was touched? <laughs> well, it was, it's all alleged. I got to say that. And this all happened before the pandemic. Um, and um, allegedly when she was running for governor, uh, there was a guy who was managing her campaign. And uh, during a meeting, she thought he was being kind of too much of a coward. So she poured some water on his junk, allegedly, and allegedly grabbed his junk to tell him to be braver. And, uh, and he uh, then later said that that was inappropriate. Um, he threatened to file suit. The, the interesting thing is he never actually filed suit. She huh. settled this case before he actually filed suit, which is, is more than a lot of uh, accusers uh, and uh, uh, the people they've accused have, have done you know, in national media. So. That's, that's an interesting thing. Uh, is that but, maybe uh, so she doesn't have to be deposed, maybe? Maybe. I mean, and, and you can read into it whatever you like. I mean, my thought, uh, again, as an attorney and somebody who's been in some lawsuits, is that if you think you're in the right, you know, bring it on. Let's go to court and yeah. uh, let's talk. Let's talk about what's right or what's wrong. But uh, if you're wrong and you're grabbing dong, then, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to get it on. <laughs> No, at least not with King Kong while he's playing ping pong. <laughs> with his ding dong in Hong Kong, yeah, right? Yeah. No, that'd be wrong. Yeah, <laughs> wrong, wrong. So, are you just uh, why? Why did you why Why did you go with that as your uh, alcohol of choice? You, you didn't have any absinthe. Is that is what's that, going on here? Just your desk. I didn't. Uh, you know, I'm 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 here in my office, and my brother's office has uh, booze in it, and there was just a little bit in the the Patron, and I figured, well. What a waste of space that bottle is. So I'll, <laughs> I'll help us out. So, I mean, things are opening up. There's going to be comedy. People are going to go to the movies. I think, I think I'm hoping that people will just be nice to each other because, I mean, shit, I used to hate crowds unless I was performing to them. And now I'm kind of happy to see them, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, this whole thing has is, is made you realize things that you used to take for granted. Maybe you should uh, rethink. I mean, um, back when I was doing comedy more actively, uh, sometimes there would be comedians. Every once in a while, me, I, I could be guilty of it, but there would be a lot of comedians who would take for granted their, their time at an open mic. Oh, yeah. And uh, just, you know, get up there and do some nonsense or, or uh, not appreciate the audience. Uh, I think that's something that, that won't happen anymore. Uh, at least for the near term. And, and that's good. And, and, you know, the same goes for the audience that you used to be that uh, uh, you go out and you'd see live stuff and you just be like, what a pain in the ass, you know, I'm trying to have a conversation, but, but now you might appreciate it more. So we're all just going to see what uh, the world's like. Um, would you feel comfortable? Uh, Cause I have the sponsorship in the works for a uh, tour uh, for comics but we're hitting a specific demographic. And so um, I, John Coyar, will be um, hopefully in, and I don't want to announce something, anything too soon, but uh, uh, I, I'm wondering if you'd like to be in on the uh, Blue Chew tour uh, <laughs> that, that I'm being sponsored by. Uh, John Coyar will be on the road, uh, sponsored by Blue Chew. Hard on the road. <laughs> I'll be working hard on the road, that's right. And, uh, and I'm... Uh, Inviting specific, uh, you could say, demographic of comics. Comics like myself, who, while they may not necessarily need to use Blue Chew, would uh, sometimes maybe use Blue Chew recreationally just to put it in the butt or, you know, wherever else. Because <laughs> you know? uh, once you, let's be honest, Fred, once you get over 40, it's hard to put it in the butt. Like, really. And, um, in your own? In your own and anyone else's. <laughs> Oh, that's that's weird, man. Cause uh, I I use the blue stuff. I don't know if it's blue chew, but it was a, the traditional blue pill. Uh, maybe twenty years ago, or you know, seventeen <laughs> years ago now. The, the only time, and when I, and uh, uh, that stuff it gives you a headache, you know, but it does the job. Oh, you can stroke out if you take too much. Yeah, I mean, it got me. It got me back in the game, and uh, to my wife, uh, you know, she's beautiful. I've never had that problem with her. But I, I had to add the, the problem with a previous girlfriend, and it was weird. I remember, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever had those kind of conversations with your parents, but I was living in Chicago at the time, and I called my dad up. And I was like, and I was like, Dad, I'm with this girl I really like, and I can't get it up. 
uh, can you get me a prescription for, you know, uh, the blue stuff? And he's like, <laughs> he was awesome. He said, do you want a prescription or do you just want the pill? Because <laughs> he had this buddy that was a pharmacist. And I was like, I guess I just want the pill. And the next day I get a FedEx package with this fucking, you know, mound of uh, the blue stuff. And uh, so now I'm familiar with that. Well, that's, that's cool. I, I asked my dad for some blue stuff to help me with the heart on, and he gave me some meth. He's like, here, son, you'll come six times. It'll be great. And then you'll eat the woman. Yeah. <laughs> so smell these socks. You'll come seven times. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I mean, so I guess we could say then, although you don't need to use Blue Chew, you would be uh, comfortable with being sponsored uh, on a tour with John Cuellar and maybe other comics like Animal Garcia and, oh, I don't know, probably what other <laughs> comics, Animal Eddie Garcia. Tafoya, you know, we'll get him in on this. You know, it's for, it's for guys who still like to perform. But sometimes they like to perform extra hard, if you know what I'm saying. You catch my drift. I don't know. That was really subtle. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you guys have been having older folks on? Who did you have on last week? The uh, uh, Lusty Carolyn. Banger. What's her name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's great. <clears throat> she is amazing. We we really wanted to have her on, um, uh, and we really wanted to have you on. I mean, um, well, I miss you, bud, and I'm glad that we got to do this little hang here. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, where where uh, do you think you'll be doing comedy this week? Do you think I know there's uh, uh, Royals Mike on Monday, right? And then yeah, uh, good for that. I mean, uh, if I go anywhere this week, it likely will be at um, Sidewinders. I mean. Uh, I, I really root for Sidewinders because they're in the old um, Martini Grill space. Oh, yeah. And that was a, one of those place, places I first saw comedy even before I did comedy back uh, in the day when it was Martini Grill. And it was, uh, um, what's his name, Matt Peterson. And it was Sarah Kennedy. And they were up there doing a mic. And I, I remember looking at them and thought, oh, man, that's great. I wish I could do that. And uh, then I was up there uh, a few weeks ago performing there. So hats that's off awesome. to them for doing a mic four days a week now. Uh, so that's probably where I'll be. Dude, I, uh, I, I don't know if I told uh, anybody but Chuck, uh, the guy I work with at the second job about this, but I went to uh, the old uh, Sidewinders the night of the mic, and I didn't know, you know they weren't there because I didn't look uh -huh. at the address because I'm a dumb shit. And so I pull into the parking lot, and I'm Googling the address like uh, from Facebook. <laughs> oh, no. And some guy <laughs> walks up to my truck, and he's like, hey. Are you looking for somebody? <laughs> I was like, uh, well, and I my <laughs> dude, and my hair was like combed back, and I had like kind of you know not a, a holy shirt on, like not not a wife beater. Shit. Yeah, and he was, it, was, it looked like I was on grinder basically, <laughs> and he was like, uh, he was like, uh, I'll uh, save you a swipe. Yeah, he was like, I was like, is is this? This isn't where Sidewinders is anymore. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I was like. Uh, Okay, well, I, I'm just going to go. And he had this grin on his face like, that guy's going to suck a dick. <laughs> see you there. Yeah. So it was a pretty interesting. But I, I did go to that uh, that venue later on that night. And they're, you're right. They're doing a, trying to do a great thing for Albuquerque by having uh, mics every night of the week. And I hope to see you out at, uh, at one of them. Uh, is there anything you want our audience to check out or look at or um, no, I just off to? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Just support Albuquerque comedy, support New Mexico comedy. Uh, when you get the opportunity, let's get back out there and let's all have fun. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, I'm glad to see you, and I'm glad to see that you're doing great uh, mm -hmm. today. Uh, thanks again, buddy. Alan, any questions? Um, no, it's just now that this uh, things are starting to look a little more normal again, Cream Pie Kathy, you can probably start pumping out more content. Oh, yeah. So we all have that to look forward yeah. to. Oh, hey, I just thought of a great idea. What a, what a better uh, documentarian to have along on our Blue Chew tour <laughs> than to bring Cream Pie Kathy so that we can have her, you know, on the bus filming things, you know. We can do an AI Capacha thing where we figure out whose load is whose. <laughs> 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 She's a great lady. She's a sweetheart. That's right. Hey, thanks again, uh, Fred. We really appreciate you, man. Likewise, guys. Take care. Thank All you right. too, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.